So I'm here to talk about the creator economy and dating, which is something you know we've really been working on for about five years now at the Meek Group. Um, we either own power or will soon power um, the live streaming video and creator economy of seven of the top 50 largest social apps by revenue um, in the world. And uh, let's see if my, this is a test of if the slides uh, work here. Yes, perfect. So, you know, App Annie recently published uh, a, a worthwhile report and it's free, you could search for it, um, which noted that three out of every $4 spent in the top 25 social apps worldwide are spent in live streaming, which is remarkable um, if you think about that and, and let that sink in. It's, it's live streaming is not a trend that is coming. It's a trend that is very much here. And the fact that so many people think it's still early is a testament to how big the video and creator economy opportunity is. You know, we've been building out live streaming video, dating games and an integrated creator economy suite for five years. Chinese companies were doing that even longer. And if it feels early to you, it may only be because you don't personally spend any money at all in live streaming, but you may have purchased you know, a subscription to a dating app. Um, but the magic of live streaming is that even if there may well be more dating app subscribers, there is more revenue and more engagement in live streaming video. You know, live streaming does not cap every member at a preset monthly subscription. It monetizes them up to their willingness to spend. And that's how, as App Annie shows, you know, three out of every four dollars in social can be from live streaming, but how it can still feel early because it is still early. Every year, more and more people are engaging in live streaming video and more and more creators are monetizing them. The creator economy is estimated today to be well over a hundred billion dollar market. Um, some sources say it essentially doubled in 2020 um, as the pandemic changed consumer behavior. Twitch, the live streaming uh, video game platform, said that people watched 1 trillion minutes of video in 2020 while revenue jumped to new stratospheric highs. And the smart money, as you can see on this slide, says this will continue. Just since October of 2020, $800 million of VC money, probably 900 million now, I think uh, uh, another streaming platform just got 100 million, but has poured into the creator economy. And why? Because the minutes and the monetization are off the charts. You know, he, App Annie estimates that spending inside of social apps, and that includes dating apps, because many dating apps categorize in social for the purposes of App Annie, um, will more than double between now and 2025 to about $18 billion per year. And what's driving that growth, um, of course, you know, the pandemic and, and changing consumer behaviors towards, towards video. Um, and the way I think about that, and kind of said it early in the pandemic, is the pandemic has really pulled the future forward where three years of shifting video adoption habits happened in, the, in a matter of three months, uh, maybe even in a matter of three weeks. And, and just within dating, people learned how little sense it makes to meet someone in person based on an interaction as shallow as a right swipe on a dating app to find out things that a two to three minute video chat you know, might have confirmed, things like you know, sense of humor, personality, uh, even appearance, you know, with with you know many many profile photos, um, you know, kind of out of date um, or or misrepresented. And over the last eighteen months, people learned that video has much to offer in filtering dates. Uh, it's just fundamentally more efficient than swiping right and meeting in person with many different people. Not to mention, there's other drivers: uh, cord cutting. You know, people are increasingly demanding a social form of entertainment a lean forward experience where you're more interactive, you're commenting, you're interacting, instead of just a Netflix-like lean back consumption of content. And today, you know, we're almost the majority of people have met their spouses on dating apps. So the concept of socializing on mobile has simply just never been more mainstream. And we certainly see this, you know, firsthand. My company, The Meet Group, it's the number one live streaming dating platform in North America and Europe. And we started out by building out live streaming video on just one app, uh, Meet Me, which is the app I happened to found uh, a while ago, 
uh, but we, we started with live streaming in 2016. And you know, at the, around the time I was spending some time in, in Beijing and Shanghai in 2015, and I was able to see YY and Momo firsthand, two giant Chinese streaming platforms. And eventually on subsequent quips, trips, um, you know, went to, to ByteDance and who, who, the maker of TikTok um, in, in, and saw that firsthand. And of course, TikTok is a, is a massive streaming platform as well. And you know, I would say in 2015, at first I didn't get it. It took me about six months to say, you know, it, it felt special, but I, it, it, felt, it felt like it could also be unique. But um, it took about six weeks to realize, or six months to realize that this had to cross the Pacific. It had to, to basically um, infuse all aspects of our social interactions. And we put the whole company back on it um, in 2016, you know, and, and building live streaming video and creator economy systems is expensive. Um, we figured if you're gonna be all in by putting the whole company on it, you might as well double down. And so we started acquiring other competitors just to put live streaming video on, on them, other dating apps like Lavu, Scout, Tagged, Growler. And um, everywhere we put it, uh, live streaming grew to 50% or more of the revenue and it was, it was successful. And we soon ran out of things to acquire and the things we wanted to video power uh, or, or acquire were essentially bigger than us. And so that's what led us down a different route um, where we started building out a solution to um, power the video and creator economy of other apps. And that's what we call our VPass platform, video platform as a service, VPass, to partner um, companies that wanna add video and creator economy. And so we basically put everything we learned uh, you know, into this VPass product, hundreds of millions of dollars of product development over the course of five years into an SDK that could be um, really integrated in, in a matter of weeks. And today, as I said, this platform is powering seven of the top 50 social apps by revenue in the world. We hope to continue to grow that penetration. Um, our owned and operated platform reaches uh, about 14 million people a month, while the VPass platform, which is only really new, in uh, March of 20, um, reaches up to another 23 plus million, and we expect that to continue to grow. Now, it's fashionable today to talk about the metaverse. Um, I don't know um, if that's come up a lot today, but, but Facebook does it, and they talk about it almost all the time. And they like to imagine a dystopia in which you put Oculus VR goggles on, sit on your couch, and go interact with other avatars in a Facebook walled garden. To me, the more inspiring, hopeful version of the metaverse is breaking down walled gardens, allowing audiences to connect across brands and across companies. And that's really the value of the VPass platform that we're building. It's all in the network effects. One of our networks has four of the better known dating apps in the world on it, soon to be five. We have other networks focused on other verticals. And the benefit of combining networks is dramatically better engagement and monetization on day one for every new app that joins the network because the talent and the audience are already there. Creators naturally want to create for the widest possible audience. And by creators, I'm referencing really streamers, not for walled gardens. You know, I think the, the arc of the internet bends to breaking down walls, not raising them up. And, within VPass, you can essentially combine communities, combine interactions. Now, I'm only going to play a minute or so of um, this video here, um, because I'd like you to have some sense of what I mean by live streaming video in the creator economy. Um, the whole system monetizes by viewers giving virtual gifts to streamers, and in a busy stream, giving a virtual gift is a great way to stand out and get the attention of the streamer. The product is gamified with levels, badges, leaderboards, and other ways to stand out. And viewers send vast quantities of virtual gifts a year. The broadcaster receives a portion of the gift value. So the broadcaster is actually making money and not a, not a little amount of money. We, we paid out more than $100 million to creators over the last year alone. Our biggest talents make over a million dollars a year individually. And here you will see people, all within dating apps, no less, entertaining hundreds and even thousands of other people at a time in a social way. Mine 
was yes. that was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I have never heard Metallica on acoustic. This is a mentorship style show where we let six people jump in the box. I just love Quest live gig. So Blake, your host, and we'll be your amazing Dr. Morgan. This is Sippin' Celebrity with Mercedes. I'm the Bachelorette. We're doing the Daily Daily episode. It's super fun. <laughs> So what you're actually seeing when that fire comes in is that's a gift. So a lot of gifts are coming in there. They take the form of these kind of fun animations. The, the more involved the animation, kind of the more expensive the gift. And ultimately it's about standing out and getting attention in, in a busy stream. You know, here you can see um, some of the formats of live video that we offer from one to many to one to many with a guest. Battles is another very popular format where streamers compete to receive the most support from their fans in the form of gifts. And that this alone accounts for about 25% of monetization in video. Next Date is a live streaming dating game that we pioneered about three years ago, allowing anyone to be the star of their own dating game. Um, it's basically speed dating, but with an audience of hundreds of thousands or, or hundreds or thousands. And you could imagine, um, <laughs> some people think that sounds terrible, but it's actually very fun to, to, to play and to watch. Um, we see more than 100,000 Next Date games being played on our network a day. We even created a blind date version of it where you only see the person you are chatting with at the end. So it starts with a blurred video that it becomes increasingly unblurred. Um, and at the end, the, the host either taps next or date. Um, and uh, if they tap date, there's a reveal and they can see who they've been chatting with. And we recently also launched Multiguest, which allows for, of course, a number of different types of shows. Um, in fact, you know, we now run um, over 80 shows, you know, from fitness to talent to magic to themed streams where somebody might put on a costume um, to interview style talk shows. And we're actually launching three new shows a week. Um, and some of these are for different verticals of our network. Um, and soon we're, we're also actually launching capacity for our, some of our top talent, you know, high badge ranked streamers to schedule their own shows. So, you know, I get still today, you know, aren't dating apps supposed to be utilities, you know, for finding a date for the weekend, a spouse to marry um, and to move on, uh, designed to be deleted. Um, and I say, no, you know, that's certainly not um, the experience that we've had. Um, the key insight behind why live streaming video fits so perfectly within dating is to realize why people come to dating apps in the first place, because they feel lonely. They wanna feel less lonely. They want to feel connection. But dating apps, you know, can feel like the loneliest place on earth in those moments when you might be sending messages outbound and not getting any replies, uh, nobody's swiping on, on you, um, and no one's matching you. And live streaming video really transforms those moments of loneliness into moments of connection. When you come into a live stream, the streamer calls out your name, like, hey, Jeff. And if you ask a question in the chat, you know, they may answer it. And over time, relationships form. And while many use these features just for connection and, and they drive you know, tremendous amounts of minutes and engagement, at the high end, there's a class of creators who become essentially micro influencers with very loyal fans um, who support them. And so you know, adding video is essentially a way to engage dating app, entertain and engage dating app visitors for another 20 minutes a day while turning on a new lucrative monetization engine. We power not only all of the video, but all of the moderation and all of the talent management. And most interesting of all, I think, is we combine network effects across multiple properties. So live platforms and creator economy benefit dramatically from scale. You can imagine if you're going to live stream, if you're a creator, you want a maximum reach. Um, and dating app users too, if they're going to join a dating app, they, they want to be able to match with a lot of people. And so breaking down walled gardens through VPass helps achieve this. Um, although we, we also support those who aren't quite ready to jump into the metaverse with two feet um, by, by enabling uh, standalone networks that we can also power. And one of the more interesting things about you know, entering into the creator economy is needing to build a talent business from scratch. And I've seen large industry players within dating, larger than us, um, who failed uh, when they launched video. And it failed because I think they viewed this whole feature and technology as 
essentially 90, 95% technology. And it's not, it's probably 50% science technology and 50% art and talent. Um, building a talent org to find, train and retain streamers is absolutely critical. We have many dozens of people who do nothing but recruit from other networks, identify homegrown organic talent, upskill potential talent, and then do everything we can to retain that talent, whether that's creating a show around them or engaging them in other ways. And of course, to run all of this video at scale, you have to make safety a part of your DNA from day one. You know, today we have 700 people dedicated to safety and moderation. We review 140 million images, screenshots, essentially a video through a combination of machine learning algorithms and human review. And the overwhelming majority, 99% of our streams are fine, but it's critical to find that other 1%. Um, you know, if you're familiar with the Tipping Point book, you know, that's why you clean up the graffiti in the subway system to prevent, uh, to prevent kind of a, a system that you don't want to take hold. And so we view safety as an ecosystem and we collaborate with a number of interesting companies, including Spectrum Labs, who helps us on the algorithmic side while also building uh, much of our own tech at when needed. But you don't have to take it from me. Just about a month ago, um, the founder of Bumble said the same thing on an earnings call that Bumble intends to monetize via the creator economy. Um, these were actually uh, Whitney Wolf's words uh, exactly. The third major monetization opportunity is the creator economy. This is a really exciting opportunity, one that we know our audience is primed for. And so um, it's quite clear that the creator economy and dating uh, were at the earliest stages. And so with that, you know, I hope there are some questions for me. Um, you can find some of my writings on Medium. I wrote a little bit about my trip to ByteDance. Um, in China, or, or you can find me um, occasionally on Clubhouse um, and also on Twitter.